Today I'm going to talk about how content builds trust and how trust builds businesses. One of my favourite sayings is, all things being equal, people do business with and refer business to those people they know, like and trust. Bob Berg, who co-wrote The Go-Giver, was the author of that quote. And if you haven't read The Go-Giver, I would thoroughly recommend it as a quite a quick um, read uh, business book with a great message. I want to talk today about whether you have trust red flags in your content, why trust is so important in business and how you can build trust through your content, so how you can do things right. It's critical to relationship building. And so good relationships are the foundation of most successful businesses. So I want to explain why it matters so much. So like any expert, most of the conversations I have with people are about problems and challenges. They want to know how they can create more content more easily and get more clients as a result. All very valid questions. So I thought I'd start by sharing a few of the common pitfalls with content creation. The hit and hope approach. So this might also be called the scattergun approach. And these content creators are inconsistent. They might post loads one week and nothing the next. They'll also be full of inspiration, but without much planning. So they might not be very clear on who they're talking to or what they're talking about. The red flags that come up, therefore, related to trust are inconsistency and confusion. Inconsistency is an interesting one because people who perceive you to be inconsistent with your content will translate that through to whether you might be an inconsistent person in your service delivery as well. So it might make them question whether you're the right person for the job. And the approach creates confusion. And where there's confusion, there's a lack of action. Um, so it's a wasted effort because if people aren't going to take action, um, then there's really no point in, in the content that you're sharing. Next comes a content creation style that is almost the opposite. I call it the targeted but tame approach. These people will know their target audience really, really well, but they'll stick to what they know. They'll stay safe. So they might display a lack of creativity. Um, they might stick to one or two topics and keep everything quite predictable. Again, the implication here is that they might be the same with the service that they deliver. So the red flag in terms of trust is, you know, would I want to work with someone who lacks inspiration and ideas or who is very much part of the crowd as opposed to standing out for it from it? There's a risk of becoming wallpaper. I, I use this metaphor a lot. The um, If you imagine you've decorated a room in your house and you've put up a really impactful um, wallpaper on one wall, a bit of a statement wall, and the first few times, maybe the first few weeks that you walk in, you see this wallpaper, it hits you between the eyes, you think, oh, I love that pattern, I love that colour, I love the way it looks. After a period of time, you get used to it and you don't really notice it. It's part of the decor, it's part of the look and feel of the room, but it doesn't jump out and tap you on the shoulder every time you walk through the door. And it's very much the same with content. If we allow ourselves to, we can become part of the noise. We just get scrolled past. It's really important to change up your, your um, approach and your energy and your angle on your content as regularly as possible. Next is a guise that we probably all spend an element of our time in, and that's the time poor creator. You know, at the end of the day, we're busy delivering our core business. Creating content is a back office task, which often falls to the end of the to-do list. So the red flags that this conjures up from a trust perspective are a lack of visibility. There's no opportunity for people to even start to build trust or for you to build trust with people because you're just not present. Um, it's also quite common for people who are time poor to really feel that they have to get everything across in the perfect post because they're posting fewer. Um, and that's that means then that the overthinking kicks in and actually you end up either risking quality or you don't post anything at all. Um, and the lack of brand identity, you know, similar to the lack of visibility, but it just means that you aren't front of mind. So if someone has a problem, you don't your name doesn't come to the forefront of their mind and they don't then think of you um, to fulfill that need. So trust just simply can't be built because you don't have an open channel. And similarly, actually, the imposter syndrome creator, 
Now, this content creator cannot work out for the life of them why anyone would care what they think. They're probably quite uncomfortable with social media in general, and they class LinkedIn as another platform that they'd rather avoid. But this means they're not visible. They don't showcase their skills, and people can sense this lack of confidence. And then they think to themselves, you know, is this the person that I would trust to help you with my business? Probably not. So the red flag there, the lack of visibility, lack of identity, not standing out from the crowd, it's not the best recipe for success for business growth. So there's two ways to go if this is you. You outsource to an expert writer or you start small with an email comms to your lists to people who you know have already signed up to hear from you. So just before we go on to how to get it right, I wanted to just put some background around why I've chosen trust as a topic and why I think it's so important, um, particularly in today's climate. Um, Edelman are uh, a US-based uh, consultancy firm, and they've been measuring trust globally across different institutions um, for 23 years. So in their 23rd year of doing it. And if you're familiar with world news right now, which let's face it, it's pretty hard to ignore, um, you'll understand why governments are so poorly trusted and the media has fallen from grace. Um, everything is so sensationalized. There's a lot of fear-based um, uh, messaging coming out and they've had difficult terrain to navigate over the past few years you know we're highly suspicious now of lots of what they present us with and so it's been left that businesses and in particular business leaders are seen as the last bastion of trust 62 percent of respondents said that they trust businesses still and that means it's the only trusted institution um, that manifests itself in these two statistics six out of ten people will buy advocate for a brand that shares their values and seven out of 10 employees want positive societal impact to be evident from their leaders and their employers. So it shows that not only will building trust help you to grow your business, it will also enable you to attract and retain top talent, which is another hugely difficult area right now. So what can we get right? How can we build trust through our content? I've come up with a, a mnemonic that spells out the word trust. So first of all, target. A good content writer knows who they're targeting and isn't afraid to niche. Speaking directly to the right people will pique their interest and that will lay the groundwork for you to start to build trust. With confidence in your target comes clarity and authenticity. You're able to speak your truth and you know what you're good at and why. Role is next. Explaining what you do is important. You'd be amazed how many people don't regularly do this. Our audience online is always growing, always changing. We need to come back to those basic messages every so often to make sure that people know what we do in order to decide whether or not to tune in to our messaging. Reliability is huge when it comes to trust. Um, sharing reviews and stories about projects you've worked on, um, they show that you can and do deliver. It's a critical trust building block. There's no one who wants to work with someone who isn't reliable. And again, the parallels are drawn between the way that you act um, in terms of your content and, and your the way that you promote your business and the way that you might work with the, with your potential target audience. Reassurance, lots of content is about reassurance, but the particular thing to bear in mind here is that by sharing knowledge and showing up regularly, these behaviours reassure people that you are genuine. You know, lots of people can kind of be a bit loose with the truth, but to do that repeatedly um, is harder. And in people's minds, again, they think about who they would like to engage for work. And if they repeatedly, if they're constantly reassured by the things you're posting, it's the building blocks. It comes together to create a feeling of trust. Okay, for the letter U, we have understanding. Show empathy, show you care and you understand what keeps your target audience awake at night. Show, share examples of why um, and how you've been able to help others in the same situation. Just creates that, that, rich picture for people it builds a clear understanding of who you are and what you do and it shows that you're human because this is you know really now at the forefront of things with with the advent of ai content you know understanding empathy these are human traits it's really difficult these days to have a true usp um the unique selling proposition it's a very crowded marketplace and um, i think it's a difficult one so i like to give it different meanings i like to call it unique service people so if we're a service-based business 
Um, you know, we're all unique. We all have different life experiences, different skills, different strengths and nuances in what we do. So you can talk about that a bit more easily. Or even, I like this one, underlying special power. People at the end of the day are going to outsource to you if you are an expert in something. And your special power is probably what you're delivering as your service. So it's something that helps you stand out from the crowd. And the best way to understand this better is to ask yourself the simple question, what makes us different? Okay, useful. I have a mantra when it comes to content, always add value. If you're sharing something that's not of use to someone in your target audience, then you're creating content for the sake of vanity, and that is a waste of time and effort. Share knowledge, insights, opinions from yourself and others in your industry to provide a rich and informative selection of content. Coming now to the S, and we have social proof. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's proof that you are who you say you are, you have the skills you say you do, and you share it on your social channels. So by its nature, it should be third party. Um, it should be in its original format as much as possible to show the authenticity. So think screenshots of um, emails or reviews. Um, and always top and tail it. So never share anything cold, just give a little bit of context. So it's almost like a mini case study um, so that people understand exactly what the review is in relation to. So even if you are very sure of your target audience, that doesn't mean that everybody will be your person. Um, people are not always on our wavelength. Um, so doing business with them can be difficult and suitability is really critical when it comes to trusted relationships. So being true to your values is a great way of building a trusted reputation. Um, only do business with people who you identify with and who you genuinely believe you can add value to. Refer people on to someone else if something feels off. But by doing this and staying true to yourself, that will come through in everything that you share, which tells a story about the way that you run your business. Storytelling um, is an over-referenced concept, really, these days. But um, I remember when it was completely brand new. Um, but, you know, it is very valid very relevant um it, it's a, a fact that couching information in a story format makes it easier for people to understand it identify with it and recall it so it's definitely an approach that works and should be part of your um suite of of the way that you create content um don't ever start at the beginning though is my top tip um we can sometimes feel we have to tell a story in a traditional sense of the of the term and actually, unfortunately, with people's attention spans these days, you'll lose them after the first few paragraphs and they won't get to the actual point of what you're trying to say. Um, I saw a piece of advice recently that said, start your story just before the bear eats you. And I couldn't put it better myself. OK, finally, the T of trust. Transparency. Um, it's really important to always be honest. Now, that might sound very obvious, but there is a huge amount of less than honest smoke and mirror style content out there. Uh, there's a lot of fear based marketing, a lot of um, content that implies that you there's some sort of uh, magic bullet under the surface. Unfortunately, you often have to part with money to find the so-called magic bullet, which invariably doesn't exist. It's not a good look for your business. Um, so if you are able to deliver genuine added value service that comes in a way that can be trusted and, and with you know human relationships and, and no smoke and mirrors, then absolutely you need to be talking about that. You know, it's it needs to be clear in your messaging. If you cause confusion, you can't build trust. Once you lose that trust with an empty statement, you can, well, it's very difficult to get it back. Um, people need to understand you and your purpose in order to know that they can trust you. So we've already talked about social proof, but I wanted to add testimonials in again because people really struggle with sharing them. Um, it's not showing off. It's not boasting. It's helping people see that you're the right person to solve their challenge. The testimonials that you receive are genuine from existing clients or past clients. And so you are helping people to make the right decision. Finally, don't forget the engagement, two-way content. So you can really bring your humanness to the forefront and chat with your prospects and followers when you start work on content engagement. 
it should be a huge part of your strategy. Relationship building, as we've said, is the key to business success. And that's the reason we're looking to build trust in the first place. We're looking to nurture and build relationships um, that could lead to businesses, to more business, sorry, to collaboration or to referrals. And it's the, it's the engagement and the, the sort of conversation that flows from a piece of content that is really, really good at doing that. So that's the full list of ways to build trust into your content. Now, don't worry, you don't need to make copious notes or try and remember that. I have put it all together into a handy download for you. Here is my trust building content matrix. By scanning the QR code here, you are able to access my link tree and it is our, a link on there to download the trust building content matrix. So um, if you haven't already, also have a look through the link tree. There's another couple of free uh, challenges and links to, to downloads, uh, as well as connecting with me on social media. So please do look me up on LinkedIn. Always happy to um, connect with, with people who are interested in what I'm talking about. And I hope that was useful for you today.